people here waiting. Hello, my fellow comic book collectors. Um, sorry, I fell asleep. <laughs> so that's how I start this this thing. So um, yeah, I'm Alan. At least I last time I checked when I was when I first went to sleep, I was still Alan. But um, I almost I overslept. I don't think you're I don't think you're Alan anymore. Maybe not. I'm, so, okay. I'm very I'm very sorry. <laughs> and um, this is Stephen. Uh, Hello, dear. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I totally overslept. I, I, I was like, oh, I'll take a little nap and then I'll, um, you know, get up lots of time. And then well, I'm was... glad that we matter to you, Alan, that you would deign yeah. to wake up and show up for us lowly yeah. plebeians, you know, being up there in Olympus. Yeah, it's really weird. So I, I don't know why I slept so much, though. I just That's like, all right. You needed it. I, I sort of felt tired. I um. I don't know. Today was kind of a weird day. So it went from being a super sunny day and pretty day. Out, then it became like sort of like overcast and kind of rainy. That put anybody to sleep. Yeah, I just sort of fell asleep. <laughs> it made me sleepy. I don't know. That's all right. Okay, so um, we're going to show some pretty cool books. Um, we I are. Haven't really, I haven't really decided which of the cool books that I'm going to show, but I am going to show some cool books. I I promised, uh, I promised you that I would show a few cool books. I got my Turok out, so um should be good. And um maybe, maybe one or one or two more beyond that. And I did find uh X-Men one. 19 2005. <laughs> and then um what other cool ones? Um yeah, so it should be fun. There should be some good stuff, okay? Good stuff. I'll I promised you I'd say it shows some good stuff. Um I have my zombie tramp. It's always right here. That 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 is old news, my friend. We must we must have it's new. It's in 3D too. Look. Oh, look, 3D. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna show some good stuff. Um, you're gonna show some cool stuff. How many books do you have to show? I have quite a few, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'm actually uh, waiting for the mail person. Hello, Bleak. Hi, Lyle. Hi, Lyle. Hi, Matt. Hello, hi, Matt. Wait, wait, wait. I gotta do all the highs. One sec here. Did I say hi to everybody? Okay, so hi everybody. Sorry for sorry for my uh, grogginess and hi. Um, uh, came Andreas. In. Andreas, yes. Um, wow, I'm just sort of I am. You know when you get woken up and you're yeah, sort I know. Of like being I know. It's sort of like into reality and like you gotta fight your way through the fog. This is this is reality, man. This is your reality. Are we sure? Or am I still dreaming? I'm not entirely sure. I may be a figment of my illusion. Mm -hmm. Hey, I um, <laughs> okay. I actually do have, it's another one of these. I've got three or four boxes coming in the mail today. Okay. Uh, and it's it's uh, 420 here. And oh, okay. she usually is here at 330. So if, if but well, I have plenty to show, but I may have actually yeah. even more. So I've got good stuff, but I could actually lead off with a few books if you wish. Yeah, you lead off. I'm going to grab a few things based on, okay. like, actually, I have everything unboxed that I just unboxed. Uh, it's all around me. So I'm going to grab those and pick the way I, I, okay, so my side, I know you have, like, awesome stuff to show, but the way I'm going to do mine is I, I recorded 11 videos for the next unboxing. Mm -hmm. Um Actually, it was really weird. It seemed like like I tried to spread out the grails throughout the, the, the series, but it just seemed like they got sort of stuck into like two or three of the videos. <laughs> There's good stuff all the way through, but the, the big books are kind of- Big books are basically jammed up. Yeah, it's really weird. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna be showing a bunch of books, but um, I'm gonna pick one book from each video, basically, is the idea. All right, we have, so, have at it. Okay. So um, I'll let you show some cool stuff, and then all right, um, and then I'll get ready. Uh, I um, uh, recently, like last week, I believe on the Monday show, I showed you uh, a, a kid's Bob Costa, I guess was his name. It had the entire Superman set for the Superman of America, and it had the it had the diploma, it had the the code card, it had the welcome thing. Uh, it had the mailing envelope it came in. It had everything except it did not have the button, which is the thing that is the most, uh, the people go for the most. <laughs> and I have found, I have found a button. Okay. And and this button is 
There are several on there. They they repopped them in 1961, uh, and they are very similar. And then they have ones that look like this, but it's indeterminate exactly when they were done, except this one, which is actually copyright 1941 on the pin. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this will go with the set um, uh, that uh, that I got that is that kid. So now I have the complete set of my Superman thing. And uh, the the little envelope, <clears throat> the thing that you could fold up and then send back to them if, if you left your decoder uh, envelope somewhere, and you could basically fold it up, put it, put a stamp on it. This is ridiculous. Put a stamp on it and have it. They can mail it to you. If it's so secret, why are you leaving leaving it around? <laughs> but why? um, but the but the thing was that I've seen those for like seventy and eighty five dollars. I've seen the main diploma thing for you know ninety dollars and things like that and i got this entire set i th i think that the guy didn't list it correctly for ninety nine dollars and so i feel really very fortunate the pin was more expensive than the whole set because the pin is is where the money really was in that whole thing and what i did do today because it just showed up because i kind of watched the um uh collectible premium stuff there was a 1961 Huckleberry Hound Club set that really? has the Huck, that has the Huckleberry Hound ring as well, which is the the big thing of that, and the whole thing for like forty five dollars or something. So I that I I like Hanna Barbera a lot, and I like Huck Hound, uh, and they even have the they put it has the uh, Hanna Barbera stationery where they give you the letter telling you about it, and and Huck is talking with his drawl in the thing y'all and all that other stuff it's going to be great so that's in the mail in the wind to me now wow. um i uh i ordered uh quite a few things from uh my comic shop and also from ebay uh ebay uh had various things that that uh, a lot of times on ebay uh it's the easiest way to find out what my comic shop has because when they list them, then you see them, and then you can always just go over and find them over there rather than try to wade your way through my comic shop. Um, in any event, uh, on my comic shop today, on the 1950 uh, uh, decade where it has new listings, there was a book that caught my eye. Uh, it was a 7 0 uh, or uh, an 8 0, I think 8 0, uh, showcase number 13, uh, slabbed 8 0. And the asking price for that book was $40,000, $40,000, oh, yeah. $40,000. Like, you showed me that. I was like, what? I, I thought you, I, I was trying to figure out what book you were talking about because it didn't make sense. The one you were referring to. And, uh, uh, and I was stunned because what, two decades ago, I bought a copy of that book from my comic shop and mine's a, a raw nine O uh, and here it is. So, here is my more valuable than forty thousand dollar comic book. I think that's mislisted. I think they add an extra zero. No, it's absolutely true. It has <laughs> to be. It has to be. So in Hi, any event, I, man. Uh, hello. Uh, so I, I I had to show my copy because it is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful copy. I love the Flash, and I told this story. I when I was going to invest in books about five, six, seven years ago, um, when I was going to actually invest, invest in a book. Showcase 4 was one of the ones that I really was interested in getting. In my heart, I wanted Showcase 4. But I knew for the amount of money it would cost that I the comparables were AF-15 and Hulk 1. And I knew, my head knew for a fact that AF-15 and Hulk 1 are going to perform one hell of a lot better than Showcase 4 would. Um, and so since money isn't growing on trees yet or ever, uh, I basically went with the AF-15 and the Hulk 1, which and the way that they've gone, uh, my uh, my surmise was was correct, but always liked the Showcase 4. I had it in, in my first collection and actually I had all of them, 4, 8, 13 and 14 plus 105 up in my first collection, but I sold that. And when I rebuilt in grade, higher grade. Um, I did not, I don't care for Showcase 8. I just don't care for the graphics on it. It doesn't look right to me. 
I do like the Showcase 4, but of course it's it's very, very, very expensive. But the 13 and the 14 are not, and those are my two favorite showcases, actually over even over the Showcase 4. I mean, the Showcase 4 is Showcase 4. But the 13 and the 14 are the, are, are truly my favorites. Um, and this is 13. 14 is the purple cover that has the hourglass where the, the, the flash is going through from one chamber to the other. Um, but anyway, so that's the first one. Okay. Uh, here is... Oh, wait, uh, wait, wait. Uh, what does this say? Street Fight Ronald McDonald versus King... What? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure how that follows with Showcase 13, but I wish you well. <laughs> here is, here is uh, Love Experiences by Ace Comics, which is sort of a fun cover. Tantalizing Kisses, Forbidden Excitement. Okay. It's, it's, it's forbidden. I uh, can't tell you. Why? Is it? Yeah, it's forbidden. Why is it forbidden? It's forbidden. It's just forbidden. So, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry. Here is a Simon and Kirby cover that is absolutely bizarre. I've never seen it, never heard about it in any way. And it's my date um, comics. It's a Hillman publication from September of 1947. Oh, by the way, Matt says 13 and 14 are better than eight as well. I Stories. agree with you, Matt. Good man. My date. What is that on the cover? I can't, it's a guy sitting it's on a a guy. Couch. It's a guy on a sofa. And mm -hmm. the, the, the one guy says, who looks just like any of the guys, looks like Rick Jones or uh, uh, Reb Ralston, except with brown hair. I mean, his guys all look the same. Uh, and his girls look pretty much the same. Well, the girl looks a little bit different, a little thinner. But this says, well, Sonny, I see Susa Bell Higgins is finally remember. getting rid of house date Harry. Yes, Swifty, but her folks had to move out of their house to do it. Oh, weird. So you got this so you got this schlub who is basically this Cato Kalen kind of character, and they're carrying him out on the sofa because they can't get rid of him, and he's eating ice cream. And right down there underneath the red there, it's signed by Simon and Kirby. My date will rate your date. Wow. Isn't That's it bizarre? bizarre. I've never bizarre. seen I, I don't I but Simon and Kirby yeah, from 1947. Wow. Very bizarre. Uh, here is one that I, I, I it's an Ajax Feral. I'd never seen this before. It's it's a code book uh, and it's called Tales You'll Never Forget. But I forgot, uh, and it's called Strange. And the caption says, Midnight. It should prove an interesting hour. I'm looking forward to the return of the Phantom Archers. And what it is, is the purple cowl is some gal or person something looking out the window. And we're looking through a candelabra at her looking out the window. And then there's a there's like a church steeple or the town square with the clock and the tower. I just thought it was, it wasn't a tremendous amount of money, but I just thought it was such a bizarre cover mm, and, a, and, a, and a code book. It has a bit almost like the LB Cole coloring. That you know. is the thing. I the, At first glance, I thought it was LB Cole, but it is mm. not. I don't know who it is. It's not signed. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I, but it's, but that, it's just, I just think that it's just a, a really interesting cover. Stuff you never see. You know, I'm just going to, what the hell is that? Okay. Very Here's cool. another one. Here right. is another one in the same vein. This one is Secret Mysteries number 17. Uh, and this one, I don't know. It's a Myron Fass cover. I've seen his name before. I don't know what company this is. I should know. Mm -hmm. It's called Strange Mysteries, Strange Mysteries number 17. Okay. Thank you. But here's this one. And Didn't they've opened S and K invent a romance book. I don't, I don't think so. If they did, I would be surprised. I'm not sure who S and K are. Simon, Simon Kirby. Kirby. Simon Kirby. Sorry, have, sorry. Have some coffee. I don't drink coffee. Yeah, right. So I'm still waking up, guys. Just bear with me. Um, the first romance book is Young Romance or something like that. Now, what this guy is saying? Ah, look at the fantastic thing in this old chest. 
It must have been lying there for a couple of hundred years. Close it quick, says the girl. I can't bear to look. It's enough to give anyone the creeps. A strange tale, packed with thrills and suspense. The Deadly Diamond, plus other features of the incredible and the unknown. Very cool. Brought to you by Myron Fass. Mm -hmm. I've seen him on a few books. Yes, me too. I like the colors on this too. Just it's just not terribly expensive books, but very strange and bizarre books. Never seen them, never heard of them, you know. And I just think and nice enough shape, to, to, you know, to put them in. I mean, it's just really oddball stuff. Okay. This one ain't so odd. Matter of fact, it's pretty cool. This is Terry and the Pirates, number eighteen, from. What is it, 1948? It says October, but it actually has the date date stamped August 24th, and it's Tearing the Pirates, more all-new Hot Shot Charlie. And Klutz McGee is pouring a... Oh, yeah, pouring, I like that one. Yeah. Pouring the hooch all over, and, and the uh, Red Dragon Lady is sitting there on the sofa, and much to the... Uh, amusement of the balance where he's trying to make a make a move and it's interesting she's dressed up in formal attire and he's dressed in a tux and the laughers behind him terry uh, and the other people why it's so funny they've got like look like they have uniforms on but they're yellow sort of odd because he's got that he's got the uh union crest or he's got the red white blue shoulder flash tee hee mm -hmm. Yeah, so Klutz, Klutz McKee, let's see, and his name there's is, uh, good girl art that's Hot Shot on the cover. Yeah, there's a few Good Girl art covers in that series. I have the one that has the girl, what's her name, and she's singing the St. Louis Blues is what she always would sing. I can't think mm -hmm. of her name. I can't think of her name either. And it was like Punjab, what's that Punjab of music you're playing or whatever it is? She says, that's not Punjab music, that's the St. Louis Blues. And so... So <clears throat> now I was I was FOMOing, okay. watching Michael Knight Tiger and uh, uh, then who else was there too? I think Alan was there, and then who else was there for those for the cowboy books? Alan, who was the other guy? Oh, uh, I forgot the other guy's name. Um, but but Knight Tiger was the one that was was showing the uh, these. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's cool. Um, uh, so Jade, I think was her name. Her name was Jade. That's right. So anyway, um, they were showing good girl Western books and I had pre-code, pre-code good girl Western books and, uh, and, or, and just really cool Western books. And one title in there really, I, 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 I'd never seen it before. Uh, and I, it's called, uh, Gunsmoke. And it ain't, it's not Gunsmoke with Mr. Dalen, but it's Gunsmoke with Gunsmoke. And here is issue number one of Gunsmoke. And you have a, a Colt Frontier, or if you would like a Peacemaker, on the, on the cover there. Uh, and uh, it's sort of a Black Terror looking kind of guy actually except he's a blonde but they have two guys they have uh the guy the guy in the, the 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 hero with the blonde hair is called gunsmoke that's him his name is gunsmoke and then the other one is the masked marvel and the masked marvel is has a skull he's a skull head very cool but there's a trail yeah we there's... were sort of picking up a bunch of gun smokes like the two of us yep but there's the there's a frail down there and he's evidently killing many muchos bandidos. Okay, so that's cool. Um, wait, I'm gonna stop you there. So you've shown a lot of books, because we'll we'll kind of go back and forth a bit. That's fine. Um, I'm actually gonna let you decide which of the following the best books, the best ones. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. Okay, you got to choose between great artist. There's four categories for this one book that I'm going to choose from. Okay. Great artist, cool silver age, a key appearance, or the fourth choice is um, 
FOMO. What was the first one? Artist. First, great artist. Great artist. Okay. Okay. So you chose. The, um, so okay, I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show three books or three or four books, and then I'm gonna go back to you. Okay. Sure. So basically, I've picked out twelve books that I'm gonna show from the Grail unboxing. Okay. And I will get into this very first one. I think this is an artist that we both like. At least I like him a lot. I think you do too. Uh, and this is the one that you chose. Uh, I think he's a great artist. Uh, this is Norm Saunders. You like Norm Saunders too, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's really well known for doing painted covers. And this one is kind of like, I, I always thought it kind of looked like Hitler a bit uh, because of the hairstyle. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, something about the face. It kind of looks like a zombified <laughs> like Hitler or something. It's just a really odd um, thing. And so it's st strange stories from another world. And it's not supposed, I don't think it's supposed to be Hitler, but it just has that weird look to it. And um uh, it's Norman Sa Saunders, and it's just, it says, out of the night came the mishapen, hideous, odious... Misshapen, misshapen. We, we say misshapen in English. Oh, mis oh sorry, misshapen. I'm, I'm reading it, like, in a weird way. Uh, misshapen, odious visages, who were they? These monsters of the mind. Sorry. And when you see me unbox it, I'll mispronounce it, too, on that as well. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> wow. Wow. Misshapen. Yeah, you're right. Wow. Learn to read, boys and girls. It's very useful. Okay. So, um, <laughs> uh, so this is from 1952. And this one I got from my comic shop. You can ding a bell if you really want. So, yeah. So, um, very cool book. A very cool. Um, and actually, you know, it's interesting, Stephen. Um, I've been noticing that Norman Saunders' books have been going up in price lately. Well, I think they're excellent. The painted covers yeah. are very, very cool. And I don't know if that could be because all those pulps that are painted covers that are now coming on the market, yeah, I think, maybe. might be having a little bleed over. I like those uh, those painted covers with those the sci-fi painted covers that we had. You know, the I can't remember. There's the guy that looks like Chuck Heston, the yellow cover. And then the mm -hmm. one before with the gal climbing out of the, the spaceship. I can't remember the title on that, but. Oh, um, what is that called? Amazing Adventures? I think so. Something like Something that. Like that. Um, okay, so that that's one of the videos. It's going to have that, that book in it. Another one of the videos, I actually unbox some of the raw books that I got from the place that shall not be named. Uh, and... <laughs> Uh, I got a saint book. This is the saint. Number two. Number two. Yes. And is this Al Omer? I think it is. Yes. Uh, so yeah, just a. I don't know. I really like this one. You know, just the. I find the woman kind of sexy, and I think the 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 way the uh, the situation is set up here with you know with you the viewer looking into the mirror and seeing the reflection of the saint in the mirror. You see the girl, she's kind of going for her gun in her handbag there. And I don't know, there's something sexy about the girl. I kind of like her. So uh, I really like these Saint covers. I, I've been trying to pick up pr pretty much all of the ones that have a good girl art cover. Uh, so um, I forget how long the series ran. It didn't really run, run that many issues. I think like about 20 issues or something like that. And um, is the gun glowing? Yes, it is. It looks like it's glowing. Just I think that's just the lining of the of the of the purse, though. Um, that is yeah. an Alan to, to confirm. That is indeed Al Omer. Alan yeah, Omer. I, Al Omer. Yeah. Alan so with thought, an E. Oh yeah. So he, he doesn't spell his name correctly, but that's okay. That's right. All the Stevens that are E V E. It's the same way. Yeah. Sometimes people don't know how to spell their own names. Okay, we'll forgive them. Okay, so, <laughs> um, so the next one, uh, and this was from an eBay auction that I won, actually has a bit of a cool story behind it because what happened was um, I was watching this one auction for a high-grade copy of this particular book, 
and it was like um i think it was going for like 50 bucks so not too bad and then i was like okay i'm gonna maybe i'll pick it up for 70 you know based on how the auction is going and there was another copy that was not quite as high grade but still a really nice copy and it was about a hundred dollars or best offer okay and then I was watching the auction and it was just kept on growing. I was like, oh my goodness, what's going on here? It went up above a hundred. And then I was like, oh man, <laughs> I better get that other book because this this one that's like at auction is just going to go crazy. So I put a best offer in, I think he accepted it. I think it was 75 bucks, which is what I really wanted to pay. And then the auction one, which was similar grade, uh, went to 200 and 50 or something like that it just kept on what <laughs> what grade was the other one it was a similar grade like vg or vf i mean yeah so it's a really nice sharp copy of this pep uh 168 and this is the famous ice skating one it's a really great one of girl. one of the famous ice skating ones yeah 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 but because it's, the it's, other one that with her bent over like that is the is the one that the, is the other pep the much earlier the one pep, where, the he, cover, he's, he's where he actually is in the water. No, when yeah, he's, he's actually in the, in the water. Yes, yes, I have that as well. Um, I expected no other. Yes. So this one, uh, it, it actually looks almost like the same pose on both of them. It's like the same exact. She's in For the same her, position. She's, it's very close. And then if you can imagine like him not being shown here, and then it's just like like him falling into the ice. Uh, but this one, it says, Archie, what's the hardest thing about learning to skate? And Archie says, the ice. And even um, Betty in the background looks really cute, too. So, that's Yes, really and the other one, she's got a very large, she has a very, uh, a very large dress on mm -hmm. in, the, in the other one. She looks very 1940s. Yeah, this one, you know, she's, she's got peppy cheeks, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So yeah, so I mean, it's just um, very cute, very cute one. And the other one, the other, the other failing of the other one, which is actually the more famous of the two covers, uh, is it has like a trade dress where there's like all the characters along the. Katie Keene is on the top, and Archie yeah. is on the bottom. It's very and interesting. And little little Jinx is there as well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think Wilbur is on there as well. I and think so, so too. Yeah. Okay, so that's two, or was that three? That's three. And then um, one of my videos, I basically, actually two of my videos <laughs> in the future that you'll watch when you watch my grail unboxing uh, was I just have, I, I, I really like collecting um, Bill Ward. And I've been trying to get a pretty great collection of Bill Ward um, cartoon books, like these adult kind of cartoon books, which, which had both cartoon art and pinup art. Uh, and I just happened, I don't know, like, you know, if you sort of think about it a lot, maybe it happens, it's actualized or something kind of weird, the secret or something. Well, there was two collections that came up right after each other. Uh, so I bought one and then immediately after I bought another one, each had about 20 to 30 books in it. Uh, so just a massive, massive collections of Bill Ward um, magazine and digests and also uh, graded comics. So um, so the first one had like a whole bunch of magazines. So this is one of the Bill Ward magazines that I got, which is Popular Cartoons. And it's just um, the way it works with these comic magazines or cartoon magazines um, is the ones that have like the full Bill Ward art covers usually go for a bit more. Um, but I actually managed to get each collection I paid it was like less than two, like I think it was 300 for both collections altogether. So it was just like really, really affordable. So it ended up being like $5 a book or something like that. Like That's a great cover. How's the chat doing? Yeah, the chat's fine. I've, I've been checking the chat. Why, okay. is, is anyone complaining? I am. Okay, okay, good. As long as somebody's complaining. Um. So yeah, so this is a, just a really great Bill Ward one. You're gonna see some more and then I'll go back to Steven. So I gave That's you some time cover. to open up stuff. Yeah, so I, I, I know, I really like Bill Ward and he has that kind of style. You, you can recognize his style after a while. You so. bet. 
Okay. So we 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 continue with our my uh, we, we both decided to go after we we FOMO uh, gun smoke. Mm -hmm. So I continue. I now continue with more gun smoke. And they always put that big gun on the on the cover. Yeah, the six the gun. gun. Yeah. Blazing Heroes of the West. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a collection, a uh, pedigree collection that came up here recently, um, and it was the Bobby Blue collection. And there was a lot of really, really cool books yeah. in there that were from the Bobby Blue, and they were beautiful books, good colors, everything else. Mm -hmm. And and I un unknowingly, unwittingly, because there was no distinction uh, when I when I saw the listing, or if it did, I I missed it. But this is uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the books from the Bobby Blue collection. Now, does it come with like some kind of certificate? Yeah. Wow. I mean, it seemed like the Bobby Blue collection was a pretty great collection. It was. Uh, they they uh, they certainly the the guys the quality of the books was great. She has very definitely has sort of a Senorita Rio looking kind of thing going on. Mm -hmm. And did you did you watch the video where they explained the 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 origin of the Bobby Blue collection? I did. Yeah, uh, I guess the Bobby Blue is the lawyer. I guess that was the one that uh, sold the collection, right? I think so. I can't remember the exact. Yeah. Oh, another another place. That we cannot name. Okay. <laughs> and here. What's the name of the girl, uh, the girl in Gunsmoke? Uh, Miss Kitty. Miss Kitty. It doesn't say, it, it, it doesn't say who she is. She's a blonde frail of some sort. Here is Gunsmoke number four. Uh, and this is a Graham Ingalls cover. And I think those other ones are Graham Ingalls as well. Okay. I mean, some of the, some of the gun smokes have really great good girl art covers. Yeah, that's that. But that one's actually that was quite nice. You can almost zoom in. Can you zoom in on that one? Actually, go back to that previous one just for a second. Just zoom in a bit. Are you gonna take it? Up? It's actually a nice gray too. Five five. Oh yeah. There's a blonde girl there. Uh, yeah, very nice. Very cool. Very cool one. I actually like the reds and stuff. Uh, it's quite sharp. And this is a brand new slab. Nice. Brand new. It has the uh, the doohickus here. Mm -hmm. Bring you fame instead of shame, Judah man. Yeah, actually, you know what's funny? I, I, I show um, a back ad when I did my recordings. I showed the back ad and I mentioned that exact thing. It's sort of funny. So there's that one. And okay. arguably, oh my goodness, I got, I guess I'm, I have even yet still more. Here is another one. This is gun smoke number two. Oh, okay. Another good girl art cover. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this one is again Graham Ingalls cover and art. I like Graham Ingalls. Yes, he's really good. Can you zoom in? Sorry, I, I'm watching. I'm doing this on my uh, phone again, so it's always so small. And is she shooting him? No, no he's got two guns. He's shooting from the hip. Okay. She's off to the one side. She looks like she has the uh, okay, leg so of a table or something in her some, hand. He's blue shooting red. somebody that's off panel, then basically. I was wondering where these where these shots are going. So I guess it's they're going past them. past her at someone on off off camera. Yeah, off panel. That's what I was saying. Yeah. And this has the you'll notice this that number four doesn't have it, but number two does. It has the uh, the code that that was died a morning. Oh, is that the star code or whatever it is? Yeah, it's the uh, ACMP, conforms to the comics code. The Association mm -hmm. for Comic Magazines, yeah, periodicals it's the, it's or the, something. It's the code, the pre-code code. 
the pre-code code that that Gaines walked away from because everything that they wanted him to do would have wiped out his company. And he wanted it to do the code. And he says, to hell with you. I don't want to do that because that will wipe out everything I do. And then he left. And then, of course, the, the code code. It wasn't code even that many in. years between the two. It's like, I think, one or two years between the two. And I'm going to cut here. And this is the one that Alan likes the best. Great, great books, great time to buy. Very bad time to sell. I agree. This is actually my favorite of the gun smokes. I like it because you know they got the girl in bondage, you got the cross shooting, and there's also the 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 he he not only shoots the guy, but he shoots the dynamite, which is cool. Well he shoots the gun out of his hand. Yeah. And then he shoots the fuse of the TNT. Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, Matt likes. And actually, uh, and and also you will notice that the the shoot the shot from his right hand, not only cuts the fuse, but it hits the guy who's got a gun right down here at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like that cover. That was that's that's going to be in a future unboxing. I actually have it coming as well. And that's and this a six is youthful magazines, uh, eight nine to forty nine. Very nice. And on the back, the most incongruous thing you can think of, an article about Louis Pasteur. Wow, that totally makes sense. From gun, <laughs> <laughs> from from gun smoke to Louis Pasteur. You know, this. You know, on so many comics, they have the Daisy rifle. Gunsmoke would have been the perfect place to put the Daisy rifle. I have no idea what Hi, the. Hi, Callie. I, I have no Hi, idea, Derek. Derek. I have Magic no board. idea what <laughs> what the the packages that they set up as far as that goes. Um, I'm get, I'm coming down to the end here, Alan. Oh, okay. Well, wait, wait. Don't then stop, 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 stop. Don't show any more then. Because uh, you know we're gonna ship between the two of us. Okay, well you 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 show a few now. Yeah, I got a bunch to show. Okay, Good. So, okay, so I'm gonna go back to me. Um, one of the books, um, I think actually was Disney. I love Disney that showed me this one. Um, uh, I collect Disney characters, actually, uh, and one of my favorite characters is Donald Duck. And um, getting Donald Duck number one is actually a bit of a challenge. It's a pretty pricey book. Um, however, when I saw this book, uh, it was actually uh, the way it was advertised. Where you could just see something like that. You could just see the top of it in the ad, <laughs> and then there was three other, like um, other two other books that came with it. So this is uh, Walt Disney Comics, uh, Walt Disney Donald Duck number 26, which is actually Donald Duck number one. And it's this great um, Halloween cover. And this one, um, the way the auction was set up, it was set, I think the price, the starting bid was 20 bucks. I bid 20 bucks on it <laughs> and won. And then the funny thing is there was listings all around it, like, you know, listings that were similar, uh, where this book, uh, even in low, low grade, was was about $200. Um, so I, I was just like, wow, I, I can't believe I just won that for so cheap. <laughs> so, uh, this is one of those ones that's a bit under the radar. Sometimes people think that it's the 26th issue of Walt Disney, but this is actually, uh, Donald Duck number one. So not many people realize that it's a very cool book. I don't know. I, li I like the fact that you got the, you know, the witch, it's a really great witch cover too. And you got the devil and uh, another witch and then a ghost so oh it's very cool really really hard to find this book by the way just a one that's under the radar so if you i was just so excited to win that for uh cheap <laughs> so, um it was one that was on my want list for a while um now i mentioned that i got a whole bunch of these bill ward books um there was another, as I said, I got two lots. One had the magazines and one had the digests and it had um, one slab. And I got it for like the whole thing. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. it was like a huge number of digests and a slab for under for under $200. 
And this lab is the highest graded uh, one on the census. Probably the only one on the census, actually. Uh, this is Popular Jokes, and it's an 8-5. Beautiful. Uh, it's from 1971, and it's uh, Humorama uh, is the publisher. And a lot of the books that uh, Bill Ward was in, in terms of the humor books, uh, were Humorama, the company. Um, and this is number 39. And it also has Basil Wolverton art as well. So just a really, uh, you know, um, really cool uh, series uh, because of the art that uh, the artists that they had involved. And generally what you would have is like, as I said, it'd be these one panel cartoons um, with like a, usually a gag at the bottom and um, just really great Bill Ward art. I mean, his art would stand out in the comic. Like, you know, you'd have these kind of crude sketches and then you'd have next to them <laughs> some like really awesome Bill Ward art. And then you'd have like some pinups as well. Like the pinups would look like this kind of thing on the back. You know, these kind of, you know, cheesecake, I guess, pinups. Um, so yeah, so this What's is- What's the joke say? The joke doesn't say anything. Oh, it actually does. Don't feel badly, Jimmy. I joined a, a computer data club once and almost got my got my us escort. Almost got my escort. Okay, wait. Don't feel badly, Jimmy. I joined a computer data club once and almost date. I almost got my escort. Okay, I, I didn't get the joke. <laughs> Sorry. I don't get it. I don't get the joke. Um. If anyone can figure out the meaning of the joke, uh, you guys can zoom in. Maybe my reading skills are iffy. Can you read that? It's exactly what you, I, it makes no sense to me. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, so the jokes are usually better. <laughs> I can tell you that much. I don't get the joke. You know, I, I'm, I'm one of those people like, you know, there's a few jokes like when we were kids, you know, that you, they were deliberately not funny and you're supposed to laugh at them and everyone would laugh at you for laughing at the joke. You know what I mean? Like where, you know, aha, we've tricked you. It wasn't actually funny. And you're just trying to make yourself look cool. Nice but, friends. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was like a weird thing. I don't know. It was weird humor time, I guess. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't laugh. I'd be like, I'd be like, I didn't get it. I like, and most people wouldn't have that amount of like humility to say that they didn't get something. I, I didn't care. I would be like, I didn't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so that's Bill Ward, great art, questionable humor. <laughs> okay. So, um, I wanted a day, got an escort and said, not too funny. Yeah. Um, got the escort maybe is trying to say he got his ass kicked. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think Bleeker's closer to it. Instead of a date, he got she got an escort. An escort yeah. being, being something means something else, Alan. Yeah, I would even say in so Canada, too. escort means something else. Well, yes, yes, uh, yes. I, I I know what an escort means. It's. Uh, I usually, don't get it, Alan. I don't get it. I'm, I'm, I have enough humility to, to tell you that I don't. I don't get it. So I don't care. <laughs> oh, actually, okay. The next book actually is for Bleeker. If Bleeker is still here, Bleeker, are you still here? This book is for you. This is, I actually mentioned you when I show this, when I do my unboxing. Um, this is Did the you're one sending it to Bleeker? No, I'm not going to. Oh, okay. I, do I send anything to anybody? I'm, I'm no, you don't. You That's about? true. Okay. <laughs> no, it was Bleeker that showed me this book. He is the one that had it. And then I was like, oh, that's really cool. So I found a copy online and I got, um, I picked it up. So this is um, Detective Comics uh, 1027. And Alex Rossi looking thing. Yeah. So Bleeker, do you remember showing this one? Uh, so yeah. So this is a uh, Mike Mayhew uh, cover. Nice cover. And the interesting thing about it is the placement of punchline. So you got Batman in the middle, right? She's and stabbing his groin. She's stabbing his groin, but like the 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 tip of the or the top of the dagger is very close to her mouth. So it just it's very suggestive. <laughs> so yeah. 
it's a very interesting cover. So I, I really liked it. I thought, wow, that's very interesting. So, um, and I liked all the different uh, girls. I actually liked the way Harley Quinn looks. I'm not sure if you can see that. I can. Yeah, yeah. And then I can show you the back as well. It's, I guess, this is like one of these variant issues. Uh, the comic mint. And I figured, hey, why not get a 9-8? So, yeah, it wasn't that expensive, actually, strangely. Um, so, you know, I guess it's from 2020. Um, the next book, I forgot which episode this is from, but this is uh, another series that we both like. But this is a very interesting series. So it went from Black Cat to Black Cat Westerns to Black Cat Mysteries. <laughs> and, and then it went back to Black Cat at the end as well. So it's the title changed and it kept it went from a girl on a motorcycle, Hollywood celebrity fights crime, to a uh, Hollywood celebrity fights crime on a horse, <laughs> to <laughs> a pre-code horror book. And this is when it was part of that pre-code horror era. And we got uh, Black Hat Mystery Comics number 52. And this is, um, who did the cover? Um, doesn't say who did the cover. I'm not sure. But it's it's just this weird, creepy guy in a Which, cage. Uh, what, here, just a second here. It's um, Black Hat Mystery Comics 52. Just a sec, Alan. It I says think. Bob Powell story and art, but it doesn't say that. I'm not sure if that means that he did the cover as well. Sometimes it's like, but it looks like, so there's a couple weird things about it. Okay. The guy himself. It's, it's the, just plain black cat. Yeah. Black, it's black cat mysteries, but well, black cat mystery, but it's, um, you can just type number in what cat. number what, uh, 52. So Steven's looking it up here. But it's a really weird one. So you got this weird guy. He's kind of coming out of this weird cage. And then there's this other guy in the back. I don't know if he's just been eaten or what's the deal. It's very odd cover. It's not Black Cat Mysteries. That's Black Cat. No, Black Cat Mystery. I mean. It I, isn't I, Black Cat Mystery. It is it plain is Black Cat. Well, okay, I, I'm telling you. It, well, I know. Well, the reason I'm telling you this is because that's fine. That's not how it's listed in in, in Grand Collector database, okay. and it's a Leah. They're thinking that it's Leah Elias did the cover. Oh, okay, that would make sense. Kind of because like they stuff. mentioned Bob Powell. They have that Joe Serta, who did Martian Manhunter, is in there too. Um, blah blah blah, and Rudy Pillay is also in the Hand of the Yogi. Has yeah. Rudy Pillay? Yeah, Rudy Pillay and. Um... Manny Stallman, Manny Stallman and John Junta and uh, Howard Nordstrand. Howard Nor Nostrand. Isn't it Nordstrand? Nordstrand? Nostrand? No, N-O-S-T-R-A-N-D. No, no, Nostrand. And he's an inker. Nostrand. 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 He inked Bob Powell. Okay. So that's cool. So, uh, so there you go. Maybe it's Lee Elias because Lee Elias did a bunch of the black hats. Yes. So that would make sense. Okay, so yeah, I don't know. I thought it was really weird. I don't know what's happening to the guy in the back. It looks you like you know what's incredible, dead. Alan. You know what's incredible? Yeah, my fingers are faster than Matt Atkinson's tonight. Oh yeah. Okay, so according to the internet, back when ladies needed to an escort from the bars, if they were working girls, they would pay a guy to escort them so they could drum up businesses, drum up, drum up business. Okay. So it's Isn't like it's pimp? sort of it's sort of like their pimp, yeah. Yeah, their pimp. Okay, I was thinking that's their pimp, really. So instead of getting a date, she got a pimp. Basically. Okay, pimp very. Okay. God, what so, a hysterical joke! That is funny. Well, I, I'm you know I don't know if I can ever recover from such great humor. Um, Rockus <laughs> belly buster, knee slapping laughter. Yes, that's the kind of entertainment that we provide here on this channel. Um, so. Um, do you have many more books to show? I have like four more books to show. I have more than four, so let me go. Okay, so you go next. Boom. So yeah, so um, I don't know. I thought the Black Cat one was interesting. That's very cool. I saw that one. Uh, I saw that one listed. And was that an MCS book too? 
Uh, no, it was uh, it was one on eBay. So what happened was I saw it on um, Instagram claim sale, and the guy wanted like too much. <laughs> he was like, oh, okay, I'll look for it on eBay, and then I found it for cheap on eBay. It was like a best offer deal. I got it for like under a hundred dollars. That's interesting. I have one that said, oh, hmm. here is uh, uh, another one of my one of our favorites with Jack Kamen uh, is Cow Puncher. Oh, I've shown that book many times. And Ryan from Automatic uh, showed the interior pages, the, you know, as far as look what you get with this. But this is a pretty nice copy, actually. No, it's a really nice copy. I I actually really like That's one of my favorite covers from the run. I just like the whole fire thing. Even the and, horse is on fire, too, by the way. Well, Everything the horse is running through the fire. No, the horse is on fire. Okay, the horse is on fire. <laughs> um, and this one is uh, this one is how many really... punches? How okay? Here's a trivia question: How many punches can a tow, cow take before going down? Where are you punching it? <laughs> it depends. This is a yeah. joke, right? Yeah, I'll yeah. bite. How many punches does it take for a cow puncher to go down? No, I think he, I think he's just joking. Okay, okay. keep on going. So uh, this is that was issue number five. And mm -hmm. here is issue number six, which is a real tough one. Yeah. Um, for a very uh, for two in incredible reasons. <laughs> I think I know both of them. Um, <laughs> and we went from and we went from Jack Kamen, and we went to Walter Johnson. Yeah, the and Al Ulmer does some as well. And and little Al, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Isn't that really a sweetie? Great stuff. Yeah, it's beautiful. I like the girls in the red dresses. I, I think that's, you know, such a blonde thing. Blonde in a red dress, no less. Yes, that's like the perfect combination. Here is a really cool book. I'll save that one. Uh, I'll save that one. For the finale? Well, I mean, there's, it's, these are comparably <laughs> this is cool. It's a really cool book, and I'm not going to show it to you. That sounds like me. What are you? You're, you're doing a me. No, I just, I have two that are comparable, and I... Okay. I just showed this one before. I want to. Sh I'll show this one again, and then one that hasn't been seen. And this is the oh, one okay. oh, you that I. That, you showed that recently. I showed this. <clears throat> I think yesterday, <clears throat> in church. Very nice. True life secrets. Does it say which number it is? I think you showed that on Friday. Actually, was it Friday? Yeah, you showed that on Friday. Was I with you on Friday? Yes. Wasn't it? Uh, Oh, maybe no. No, it wasn't. This was on church. I did this. Oh, maybe we had, it was on we had our Saturday. We had our Saturday unboxing because you were on the Comic Collector Club and won the championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. So when did I? I thought I commented on it. I, I didn't it looked, realize no, I was. No, your... no, 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 no. It was Monday. It was Monday. Oh yes, shown on Thursday. That's why I knew it was recently. You showed it on Thursday. So this is it. Thank you, Matt. I knew I saw it and I was commenting on it. So there. I just really think this is uh, amazing. <laughs> and, and Biggie's like, I'm not getting between you. <laughs> <laughs> and then <clears throat> the last raw one I have. Does, I have, he, I have oh, does he ever punch a cow in the comic? No. The term cow puncher is just like a cow uh, rustler. Uh, you it, know, no, uh, it's a cowboy. It's a, a cowboy. cowboy. Yes, a cow rustler. A cow, you know, person that manages the cows. Is the he's not a cow saying. rustler. A cow rustler is somebody you hang from a tree. A I cow know, he's puncher is steals... someone that basically keeps the cows in the herd, which is a cowboy. Okay, or a cow well, poke. I meant uh, cow, cow poke, yeah, or cow something, yes. Okay, go ahead. I was trying to say it's just a cowboy at the end of the day, but okay, go ahead. Very good. I was getting there, but you 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 cut me off. Okay, go ahead. I it, someone has to. <laughs> I'm just babbling. This here. is this <laughs> is <laughs> this is down with crime. Just let <clears> the number... guy show his book in peace. <laughs> I'm trying. Okay. I'm doing okay. my. What does it mean? What does the cow puncher mean? It's a cow puncher. No, it's not a cow puncher. It's a cat. It's a cow poke. What's a cow poke? It's a wrestler. No, it's not a wrestler. He's a wrestler. Not a wrestler. He's a wrestler. Okay, go ahead. Down oh, with yeah. crime. Another one that I showed before. No jail can hold me. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, we show the same books. It's awesome. <laughs> I I really like that cover though. It's a great bondage cover. Um, that series actually has some pretty great covers. That Down with Crime. I do like the uh, kind of Archie-ish good girl stuff. And one of the best, uh, because there was Archie and Atlas and Marvel and what have you that had them. This is an Atlas one, and it's Millie the model, but it's a good oh, wow. one. It's an, that it's is a code, really nice one. It's a code book, and it's a uh, nice shape, and it's a Dan DiCarlo cover. Very, very nice. Clicker, you forgot your camera. Gosh, a guy can't think of everything at a time like this. <laughs> I was, I thought I was an escort. Yeah, exactly. Wow, that's a really great one and really high grade. Um, these books are not ones you see in high grade. Um, so yeah, seven oh, that's quite nice. I'm currently bid bidding on that Millie. Wow, I hope you win, uh, Tor. I, I, yeah, I like uh, Dan DiCarlo as well. Here's another one. And this is another one Alan will say, I already have it. <laughs> but you'll probably have a nicer grade, so you'll win on that. And this is the comic oh, yes. comic. I actually forgot what my grade is. Here, one sec here. You do show that for a second. You explain it, and I'll be right back. Ten Commandments of Citizenship, it says. Fight. This is to fight communism. America under communism is like this, with with men being, their arms being broken, and women being, men being strangled, and, and even they're, they're beating up a black guy. I mean, come on. The, our flag's in flames. Look at the green up at the top. There are four different versions of this book. There are there is one that has no price, which I think is the one Alan has. That's one A. One B is this one. One C is this one, but there's a circle where the 10 cent is and it's empty. And there's a Canadian one that has a red hand reach, reaching in. I'm trying to get that one. This sort of, I think it's dripping no, that's, blood. Or that's the fifth one, the Canadian one. And that's the one I would like to get because these are all, but this is a, this is a white pager, which is a very, it's a, it's quite a thing, but it's the 10, it, it has the 10 commandments, uh, uh, the fight communism with the 10 commandments of citizenship. It says, know your government, know the issues before it, keep up on foreign problems. Jeez Louise. Um, be tolerant of other races, religions, and nationalities. I don't, I'm not for that either. Practice your own <laughs> religion. Practice your own religion. Um, read newspapers and magazines critically. Use your vote. Canada needs that comic right now. Follow closely the actions of your elected representatives for all the good that'll do you. Yeah. Join political organizations for all the good that'll do you. And be an American first. Now, I will stand for that. Uh, America first and in all of its incarnations, presently and currently, to save our country, to get away from that. There it is. It says we aren't political. But this is a nice green. There is, there's Alan's. Oh, just a six. That's a, that's sad. Okay, but it's all right. <laughs> so mine, okay, so the, I'll actually explain that the, the four different versions. There's a I just did. Version. I just did. <laughs> okay, what did you say? So you said, All right. I said 1A is the one that you have that has no price. 1B is this one that has the 10 cent mark. Oh, no, yours is that's the third because there's one that doesn't even have it. So yes. 1A is absolutely blank. This is the second one. Allen's is the third. That's 1C. And uh, 1D or the fourth one is the Canadian version that has the red hand. It's a totally different. Wrong. Graphic. wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay. So the, the four versions, just so you know, um, there's one with this seal, like uh, emptied right here, wait, right here, where it mm -hmm. still shows this thing, but it's empty. Mm -hmm. There's one with uh, with no thingy at all. That's there's right. There's two different versions with this 10 cent. 
There's a large ten cent and there's a small ten cent. Okay. And then there's a fifth one, which is the Canadian variant, which is a different cover altogether. Okay. You're right. You're right. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> so, but they're all cool. They're all cool. Uh, the the ones with the ten cent though are a little bit harder to find usually. So yours is actually a bit harder to get. So yours is a really cool one. And how much? Like just out of curiosity, how much do you? How much did you pay for that roughly? Uh, I think three and a half. Well, that's a really good price. And the other, nice. there's another one like this in the current my comic shop auction that ends mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. I that virtually the same as this one, and it's sitting at something like two seventy five right now, maybe two ninety five now. Okay, and it's a seven zero as well. Mm hmm. Cool. Here is. Uh, <laughs> the Canadian version has been banned for hate speech. Yeah, probably. I wouldn't doubt it. Okay. Uh, the uh, standard comics, uh, Ned Pines is the guy that... Yeah, that we both have a lot of similar books, by the way. Okay. Thank you, Susie Q. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and standard comics, uh, Ned Pines, standard Nidor and what have you, mm -hmm. post-war... Uh, in the uh, the like from 46 up to 50, 51, 52, he would Pines would get the rights to publish. Uh, I won't say public domain. Oh, wow. because, so there's even a French variant, maybe. I think I did see that, but it's it's completely different from the well. Of course, the Canadian is different too. Yeah, yeah. But um, uh, uh, but the. Um, but what he would do is he would get like char characters like Ali Oop. Uh, he mm -hmm. would get uh, characters like um, Captain Easy. Uh, he got uh, like Brick Bradford. Um, and then he also got this one called Boots and Her Buddies. And Boots and Her Buddies is, it just screams 30s to me. I think it's, and of course the name Boots. Is it. But here is Boots and Her Buddies number six. From December of 1948. Mm, I really like that one. And and uh, I don't know how they got the Submariner to, to uh, mellow out enough to come here and hang out with her. He, I think he thought it was Sue Storm or something. And you know that the the story that they're they're kind of walking into is there's going to be a shark attack. <laughs> they're going to get attacked by a shark in the story. And this one, um, this one, uh, the little girl has freckles and stuff, and he's going to teach her how to swim. He's going to teach to he's going to teach Blondie something else. <laughs> and here is another boots. This is boots number nine, and this is actually the last issue. And in this last issue of Boots and Her Buddies is yeah, Frank said you Frank Frazetta Arch. You showed Arch. that on church. Uh, boots one, yes. Uh, yes, I think I did. Mm -hmm. But this one is real cute. This is the last issue. Yeah, it is really cute. I think there was a lot of really good ones in that series. I was actually looking at that series before you picked these up. I was just, I thought it was really. You're always ahead them. of me, Alan. You have all the books before me. You you have them before me. You get them cheaper. You get them better. You get them <laughs> faster, longer, well, stronger, these, all these the time. You got these two slabbed. I, I mean, I was actually looking for slabbed copies, but there wasn't any when I was looking. And um, all the raw ones were kind of mid-grade, like or lower. So you, well, this you is a work. three, but it's a it's an awfully nice looking three. It's a very nice looking three. So, but my point is, you did well. I think you did well in these two books. Thank you. The insult turned a chump into a champ. Oh, nice! Is that the one? Is it kicking the sand in the guy's face? Uh, this one, they're at the they're at the carnival, and they ask the the wimp to use the uh, to try to ring the bell. And here he does oh. it with one hand. He rings the bell with one hand, and then he he uh, gives the guy a forehand right. And he's wearing his speedos now because he's all ripped. And the girl is so vacuous that it didn't matter. She didn't like him when she he was a wimp, and now she likes him because he's a stud. Hi, Hi Ebok. Very cool. How many books do you have left to show? I have one, two, three, four, five oh, you more. Have a, you have a lot more books. Okay. 
Just show one more, more and then we'll I'll go. No, no, show one more and then we'll I'll go back to me and then I'll go back to you. Okay. And you can you can be the grand finale. All righty. <clears throat> Another title that Alan and I collect um, because it's uh, an artist named Maurice Whitman, and it's called Cowgirl. It's so wrong that. Yeah, it's that only, it's. It I was. Think it, I think it was overgraded. Um, under, undergraded. Under, like overly. Yeah, it was undergraded. Well. Uh, I, I overly harshly graded. I saw. Yeah, it's. Yeah, uh, and I've got books that I'm going to be sending in pretty quick to have done. Um, I have three books with Kenny Sanderson student Kenny Sanderson Sanderson Studio right now. My Action 40, uh, my Captain Marvel with Slap the Japs, and then my uh, All-Star Comics number four. And all three of those are going to have him lay hands on them, and then they're going to go in to be slapped. Because I want to protect them because they're nice enough books and important enough books that I I, I do want to, yeah. <laughs> You're right, Matt. And hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. But Cowgirls is another one that we collect, and this is a pretty fun cover. Mm. And is that uh, Maurice Whitman? I think it's Maurice. It looks like Maurice Whitman to me. Yeah, that's what it looks or like. Or somebody that's 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 uh, aping his style. I should say Maurice Whitman if it is. I will look. But it's it looks very much like him. I will mm -hmm. check and see to be sure. Yeah. Cowboy Romances number nine, Fiction House nineteen fifty two. I will check. Alan, right. why don't you go ahead and go? That's my one. I will I will find out what it is. Okay, cool. Uh, so I have four books left to show. And then I'll let you be the grand finale on, on this video. Uh, okay. But this will... Um, this is really... This whole episode is you showing all your books. But I'm showing you hints of the next 11 videos that will be appearing on my channel. Um the, uh, Lyle, the, the, the unboxing will happen uh, next week. Next week. So not this week, but next week uh, will be the, the, the new series of unboxing. And I'm calling it the Grail unboxing because um, there's probably, I was thinking there's about 10 Grails. And yeah, some, of them are more, some of them are more questionable than others because like one I consider a Grail, but because it's just a really heinous <laughs> pre-code horror cover. Um, and then there's others that are like obvious grails where people would be like, oh yeah, that's a major book. Um, so yeah, next week it's coming up. It okay, is indeed, it is indeed Maurice Whitman. I figured. Yeah. It looked like his style. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to show some, my, my last four <laughs> books. What, what are you laughing about? Nothing. I have nothing. <laughs> okay. So, um, one of the videos that, I'll, that is coming up in this grail unboxing is just all ec books it's it's one one episode's purely ec um crime suspense stories collection i bought and um this is one of the ones that i bought um this one actually is probably the coolest of the ones that i bought so it's it's interesting because this is um crime suspense stories number 13 it is missing a page so it got a 0.5 but um, the cool thing about this book is it's the Lizzie Borden uh, episode, uh, and it basically, uh, you know, it shows Lizzie Borden with her axe, her trusted axe, and I think that's her father right there. Um, why did she her, hack them up, mother? Alan? Do you know why? What? Why did she hack up her parents? Do you know why? Yes, I do know why. So I actually explain in the video <laughs> that I presented on it. Um, basically, uh, they were all very wealthy. Uh, they owned a big house in town, actually. Uh, and um, her father was very, very frugal. Very frugal. And he would not let her go to dances and parties because, you know, he and he wouldn't have dances and parties at their house. Um, and she wanted to be a bit of a party animal. She wanted to get out and have fun. But he was frugal. He was like, oh, you got to go to church. You got to do all this other stuff. And um, she wanted to play <laughs> and her parents were in the way. So she got rid of her parents. Uh, the interesting thing was, um, you know, the, the crime was so brutal that that actually, because of the brutality of the, of the crime, 
like literally she hacked them up like like 40 wax like the the nursery rhyme goes lizzie borden took an axe gave her father 40 wax when she saw what she had done she gave her mother 41 and it's at the bottom here it's quite cool um so it was so brutal that the people in the court the the jurors couldn't convict her they they couldn't believe that a woman could do this so they actually let her go <laughs> But uh, people in the in the town really felt that she was guilty, and they shunned her afterwards. So she she kind of got more like a civic uh, punishment. I have a yeah. little bit more for you, but this okay. may be more pop, more of a, cu a culture. Okay, um, go ahead. Uh, the thing was that one of the arguments that the prosecutor or the defense made mm -hmm. was that there was so much blood that when they found her, when she came there, there was absolutely no blood on her. Well, she and they think what the she did, she stripped naked. Yes, yeah. she stripped naked to kill them both. And that the- No. Well, that's, that's what true. that's the way it was when Elizabeth Montgomery portrayed Lizzie Borden in the movie where they, it was the actual story. Okay, so- Hold on, let me finish before right, you okay. before you, before you you give your Canadian spin on this. <laughs> Canadian and then the other thing was that they were showing her was that they also were very frugal about the food and they never wasted any food. That's true. That's and true. peas porridge was the thing that, that, that they had that was just peas porridge that they kept eating over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And that's where the, where the poem came, peas porridge hot, Peas porridge cold, peas porridge in the pot, nine days old. Wow. And the nine days old, and I think that she snapped. That was one After of the things that made her days. snap <laughs> was that they were continually eating this goddamn peas porridge. And after nine days, she'd had enough. She took off her clothes. She didn't strip naked. She had her underwear on, and then she burned the underwear or whatever she did. But okay, it was. Maybe that's the difference. Okay. Yeah, and so that, and so then, but but that was. She says, "Can't we have any other food? We have money. No, you have to eat this," and that was one of the things. So, uh, forty wax was part of it, and peas porridge cold, and peas porridge in the pot. I didn't pot know that peas porridge part. That's interesting. That's an extra little wrinkle. Um, so the part that I heard, and this is a different video. She never stripped naked. Um, was that uh, she? Uh, she was actually spotted with clothing that was covered in blood. And mm. what she said that was that she was painting the barn or something like that. And that, that was the explanation for the red on the clothes, but she then burned the clothes to cover up the crime. Okay. Uh, the, in the, in the movie that I watched with, again, with Elizabeth Montgomery, what they did was that she, she took her dress off because I don't think she had a lot of clothes either. They wouldn't buy her any clothes. She had, no, just had, she had very dress, workable clothes. Very spare. Say. And yeah. so she shook, She took her dress very carefully, put it to one side. Mm -hmm. And then she was in her in her underwear. She basically hacked her to pieces. Then mm -hmm. she either, she then burned the underwear or, you know, disposed of the underwear. And mm -hmm. then she took a bath and then she cleaned herself completely before yeah. she said, look what I found. I mean, my parents have been killed. Yeah. Then she, she pretend, Oh, shock. Yeah. Yeah. I knew that part, but, um, I, I know, you know, you knew it, Alan. I knew you knew but, it. But, uh, the point is like, there was, uh, I think there was like a housekeeper or something like that, that had witnessed, uh, her with red on the clothing. Um, so yeah. So Lizzie Borden. Okay. <laughs> So, very cool. Very cool. I mean, very cool book. Um, so that's that one. I'm going to make myself big and I'm going to finish off my last three books. Uh, obviously, they didn't know about aerial spray. Arterial oh, spray, Alan. Arterial. Oh, my goodness. Don't, don't mind me. Okay. I can read. Really, I can. Not very well, though. Um, arterial spray. One whack can do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really don't think the forensics were, were up to snuff back then. What um, year was it? Eight, 1840s? What was it? No. Uh, it was newer than that. I think it was like like 1890s, if I remember correctly. It was like just before the turn of the century. You can look it up. You can look it up. I think it was 1897, I want to say. 
I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so my next book, while Stephen is Googling Lizzie Borden, um, <laughs> is Mad Number 5 or 6, Number 6, uh, from 1953. And this is a, a Harvey Kurtzman cover. And you see, um, these early Mads were actually quite interesting because they would have a lot of good girl art covers. And this one has ha, does have a sexy girl, if you see the girl in the middle. But the interesting thing about this book, and the thing that makes it actually one of these underrated keys, uh, and a major key actually, is that you see that they're in this like hand print or uh, like weird footprint maybe, uh, and it's King Kong. So that's King Kong's footprint, um, and it is the very first appearance of King Kong in comics. So this is, if you ever want to get the first appearance of King Kong, well, this is the book to get. So it says, King Kong, Tarzan, and Casey at Bat, Terry and the Pirates parodies. And it has a Harvey Kurtzman story and cover, Wally Wood, John Severin, Bill Elder, and Jack Davis art. So kind of a cool, cool book. Uh, Spy vs. Spy happened much later, just so you know, Biggie. So yeah. So did you find out when the killing happened, Stephen? Uh, Thursday, August 4th, 1892. 92. I was off by five years, so I was close. Although the, it says here, uh, uh, Morse was the uh, was the maid who was there from from Ireland. Yeah, it says Morse arrived in the evening of August third and slept in the guest room that night. No, no, no. After breakfast the next morning, in which Andrew, Abby, Morse, and Sullivan were present, Andrew and Morse went to the sitting room where they chatted for nearly an hour. Morse mm -hmm. left around eight forty eight a.m. to buy a pair of oxen and visit his niece in Fall River. Okay. Planning to return to the Borden home for lunch at noon. Andrew left for his morning walk sometime after 9 a.m. Although the cleaning of the guest room was one of Lizzie and Emma, Emma is her sister, became a uh, regular chores, Abby went upstairs sometime between 9 and 10.30 a.m. to make the bed. According to the forensic investigation, Abby was facing her killer at the time of the attack. She was first struck on the side of the head with a hatchet, which cut her just above the ear. Mm-hmm causing her to turn and fall face down on the floor, creating contusions on her nose and forehead. Her killer then struck her multiple times, delivering 17 more direct hits to the back of her head, killing her. Mm -hmm. When Andrew returned at around 10.30 a.m., his key failed to open the door, so he knocked. Sullivan went to unlock the door. Finding it jammed, she uttered a curse. She would later testify that she heard Lizzie laughing immediately after this. She did not see Lizzie, <clears throat> but stated that the laughter was coming from the top of the stairs. This was considered significant as Abby was already dead by the time her body would have been visible to anyone on the home second floor. Lizzie okay. later denied being upstairs and testified that her father had asked her where Abby was, to which she replied that a messenger had delivered Abby a summons to visit a sick friend. Sullivan stated that she had then removed Andrew's boots and helped him into his slippers before he laid down on the sofa for a nap. I knew he a took a nap and then she killed him. A detail contradicted by the crime scene photos, which show Andrew wearing boots. She oh, testified okay. she was in the third floor room resting from cleaning windows when just before 11 a.m., 11, 10 a.m., she heard Lizzie call from downstairs, Maggie, come quick, father's dead. Somebody came in and killed him. Andrew was slumped on a couch in the downstairs sitting room, <clears throat> struck 10 or 11 times with a hatchet-like weapon. One of his eyes had been split cleanly in two, suggesting that he had been asleep when attacked. His still bleeding wounds suggested a very recent attack. Dr. Bowen, the family's physician, arrived from his home across the street and pronounced both victims dead. Boy, that's a there's a great doctor for you. <laughs> oh, I think they're dead. They're, I they're think they're dead. <laughs> Detectives estimated that Andrew's death had occurred at approximately 11 a.m. Lizzie's initial like answer. hours after the wife. So interesting. Yeah. So it wasn't gave, gave her father 40 wax and gave her mother 41. It was actually the opposite. It I thought was it was the, the exact. That it, it was the exact. And it wasn't 40. It was just uh, it was 17. like 12 or 13. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just. 
Um, Lizzie's <laughs> initial answers to the police officer's questions were at times strange and contradictory. Initially, she reported hearing a groan or a scraping noise or a distress call before entering the house. Two hours later, she told police she had heard nothing and entered the house not realizing that anything was wrong. When asked where her stepmother was, she recounted Abby receiving a note asking her to visit a sick friend. She also stated that she thought Abby had returned and asked if someone could go upstairs and look for her. Sullivan and a neighbor, Mrs. Churchill, were halfway up the stairs, their eyes level with the floor, when they looked into the guest room and saw Abby lying down on the floor. Most of the officers who interviewed Lizzie reported that they disliked her attitude. Some said okay. she was too calm and poised. Despite her behavior and changing alibis, she was not checked for bloodstains. Police oh. did search her room, but it was a cursory inspection. At the trial, they admitted to not doing a proper search because Lizzie was not feeling well. They were subsequently criticized for their lack of diligence. In the basement, police found two hatchets, two axes, and a hatchet head with a broken handle. The hatchet head was suspected of being the murder weapon as the break in the handle appeared fresh and the ash and dust on the head, unlike that of the other bladed tools, appeared to have been deliberately applied to make it look as if it had been in the basement for some time. However, none of these tools were removed from the house because of the mysterious illness that had stricken the household before the murders. The family's milk and the victim's stomachs removed during That's autopsies yeah, she performed was in the Borden dining room were tested for poison. None was found. Residents suspected Lizzie of purchasing hydrocyanic acid in a diluted form from the local druggist. Her oh, defense what? was that she inquired about the acid in order to clean her furs, despite the local medical examiner's testimony that it did, that it did not have antiseptic properties. Lizzie and Emma's friend so Russell what, what, blah, blah, blah. She was going to clean the weapon with the, the, the acid? Is that the plan? Lizzie appeared at the inquest hearing on August 8th. Her request to have her family attorney present was refused under a state statute providing that an inquest must be held in private. She had been prescribed regular doses of morphine to calm her nerves. Wow. That ought <laughs> to do something. And that it works. is possible that her testimony was affected by this. You think? Her yeah. behavior was erratic, and she often refused to answer a question, even if the answer would be beneficial to her. She often contradicted herself and provided, you know, any defense attorney would make hash of any of this with if she they, they were administering morphine to her. Yeah. Wow. Okay. The crazy. last I'll give the last part. I'm getting a little bit too long here. It says here, uh, a prominent point of discussion in the trial and press coverage of it was the hatchet head found in the basement, which was not convincingly demonstrated by the prosecution to be the murder weapon. Prosecutors argued that the killer had removed the handle because it would have been covered in blood. One officer testified that a hatchet handle was found near the hatchet head, but another officer contradicted this. They, they're all screwed up. Though no bloody like the, clothing the, the police was police were a bit incompetent in this case. Though no bloody clothing was found at the scene, Russell testified that on 8 August 1892, she had witnessed Lizzie burn a dress in the kitchen That's stove, saying it had been ruined when she brushed up against wet paint. Yeah, that's why I knew. During the course paint. of the trial, the defense never attempted to challenge this statement. Lizzie's presence at the home was also a point of dispute during the trial because according to testimony, Sullivan entered the second floor at 1058 and left Lizzie and her father downstairs. Lizzie told several people at this time she went into the barn and was not in the house for 20 minutes or possibly half an hour. Hyman mm -hmm. Lubinsky testified for the defense that he saw Lizzie leaving the barn at 11.03 and Charles Gardner confirmed the time. At 11.10, Lizzie called Sullivan downstairs, told her Andrew had been murdered and ordered her not to enter the room. Instead, Lizzie went to, went to sent her to get a doctor. Okay, Both cool. victims' heads had been removed during autopsy and the skulls were admitted as evidence during the trial and presented on June 5, 1893. Upon seeing them in the courtroom, Lizzie fainted. Evidence was excluded that she had sought to purchase prussic acid, hydrogen cyanide, purportedly for cleaning a sealskin coat, cloak from the local druggist on the day before the murders. The judge ruled that the incident was too remote in time to have any connection whatsoever. Wow. Very interesting. So, okay. So we got a few more facts. 
I mean, so, so that's so that's it. Yeah. So the naked part that you mentioned didn't happen. Nope, it didn't. See, I told you. So yeah. So I was right. That's all that matters. Okay. So um. <laughs> But I actually watched a video, a movie about Lizzie Borden. They all like they all have their own little thingies that they do. And I also watched a few documentaries a few years back on Lizzie Borden. I remember, I I, I sort of remember, you know, how your mind gets sort of cluttered by different events or different facts and stuff. Yeah. Alan, uh, I want you to check the time. If you're <laughs> going to put a bit on that strange mysteries, the one that I passed on, it said ninety nine. Okay, so so here's what I did, just so you know, before this video is dropping or as it, because it's right now that those auctions are going on. I put my, I might, I put my max bids on all of them. Okay. I did, fair it, enough. I, I did it like a Stephen Gentner style. Okay. I, I will because be it, going. It goes up anyways, regardless. Right? I will go, I will go, uh, I will go uh, at seven because mine ends at seven ten, and I'm going to go in and come in. Okay. I want to do it the Allen way. And so I will probably lose, and you using the Stephen method will probably win. Do you have any other books to show since since we're okay. no longer with Lizzie Borden? Okay, yeah, yeah, we 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 did the Lizzie Borden thing really well. Um, I have two books left to show. You have four books. How much I time do. do we have before you have to go? Oh, it's only a quarter to six. We got plenty of time. Oh, okay. I, I, okay. I I I'm I think it ends at seven ten, so I'm not worried. I heard food poisoning from rotten food caused madness. Oh, that's interesting. That also was, I heard that one too, Sue. So maybe he was too. mad from the food, actually. Poison food. Yeah, that, that's And incredible. then they jacked her up on morphine. Why can't she figure out what's going on? <laughs> why is her head so cloudy? Why is her um, head why is she so fuzzy? Yeah, uh, maybe uh, Lizzie was the real killer of Nicole and Ron. That would make sense, actually. Um, you know, yeah, I was ex I was actually just telling somebody the whole O.J. Simpson's trial thing. But okay, let's get back to funny books. No more serial killers. Um, so I'm going to show you two more books. Uh, this one actually is interesting for for a weird reason. I'll, I'll show this book. This is Green Llama number four. I like it. And, and it's um, the Green Llama kind of bombing Japan with him, his own body almost. He's like dive bombing uh japan and this this actually happened this book happened just before they actually dropped bombs on japan so what very, date is what it, what's the date of publication well, it's, it's it's uh april uh 45 so a few months before the you know the bombings of uh nagasaki and hiroshima um so the interesting thing about this one though is nothing to do with this comic. It has to do with this stamp on it. Can you read that? Bonnets. Bonnets. I've seen so many comics like from the golden age with that stamp, this massive <laughs> bonnet stamp. Um, I, do you have a few bonnets as well? Actually, Alan, I actually do. And if you make me big for a minute, I will show okay. you. Okay, cool. So, and I didn't even notice it when I bought it, but right up there by where it says cow, it says bonnets. Do you see the bonnets? Okay, wait, I'll make you bigger so that you can show yours a bit better. Zoom in right onto the bonnets part. Oh, yeah. It's very faint, but I can Thank see. God, because I I vowed I would never buy a, a bonnets bonnet. book with that big black stamp all over it. They, they just... They were disrespectful what they of, were their, thinking. of their material, and they were disrespectful to their customers. I don't know why they did that, but there's so. But the funny thing is, so many of the bonnets copies survived. Yes, somebody. It's, I don't know what. I don't know how it. Does it say where it is? It's. Uh, um, it's hard to read. Largest dealer of something, 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 and back then issues. Just, uh. So I guess they were a comic company. Is it Dayton, Ohio? I think it's Dayton, Ohio. Store stamps can be fun, but not this one. Not those. <laughs> so I think fortunately it's faded. They they were so cheap ass with the stamp and the ink <laughs> that that they didn't have enough to mar yeah. my book. Okay, so that's that one. Mm -hmm. um, and I have one more to show. And this one, 
for me is a really really high grade like i i normally don't uh go after the high high grades because they're usually crazy expensive but um and this one is a major key so you know that i've been going down that rabbit hole of trying to get the first popeye yes so i you know i thought it was one book then i thought it was another book and then the, then it was this cartoon book and then it was a little thingy and <laughs> just a whole bunch of things well once i finally got thimble theater number one which is truly the first appearance of popeye um then i learned that there was another popeye first that is kind of a major key um popeye when he was printed in the comics at first was really just reprints it was reprints of the news strips um until this book this is four color 113 and this is actually for the first time comics specially written for this book exactly you can see that right there at the bottom so this is the first original popeye story for comics uh, this one is considered kind of, it's not really Popeye number one, but it's it's kind of the, the next best thing, right? Um, and it's usually a pretty pricey book because Popeye collectors would, would generally go after it. This is a 9-2. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's a file copy. It doesn't say that it's a file copy, but I believe it is. It's one of those Dell file copies, I believe. What's the census on it, Alan? Do you know? I think it's like two or three copies at this grade. You know, there were file copies. Um, and um, the census count overall, I think it's like less than 30. I, I'm pretty sure you can check it actually on Go Collect. Um, but I, I paid this, I think it was 300 for it. Wow, that's ridiculous. Good job. Isn't that, isn't that great? That's a fantastic uh, price for that. You know, to get like these Popeye books, to get them in high grade is just really hard to get so yeah so I just, and what and year is that again this one is 1946 and it's a white pager beautiful well done isn't that nice so that's one of the bigger books that i picked up well, not it's not a grail but it's it's one of the it's one of the many cool books i figure it's a good way to finish this preview you said to show some big books well i think that's a reasonably big one Okay. That's a beautiful. That's a beautiful book, man. Yeah, like normally I don't go for those super high ones, but when the opportunity presents itself, when you can get it for a good price, hey, go. Yeah, go. So uh, yeah, and it's a great cover too because it has all the the major characters on it. You know, Popeye, Sweet Pea, and Wimpy, as Comic Mate using says. So yeah. So, I have been seemingly getting more and more faucet material um yeah <laughs> can, he's the only one that can beat one punch man yes uh and uh what i have found is that the um the uh the the characters uh the faucet stuff there are a lot of great patriotic covers uh and i was watching some show here the other night where someone was arguing that the they thought that the Fawcett books had the best patriotic covers. I can't remember who I was watching that said that. Was it Man Cave? I don't know. I can't remember. Somebody. Yeah, was... no. You're, you're, it was Jerry. Jerry the Jitterbug. That's yes. correct. Yeah, Jerry. Yes. Thank you. That was on Thank my you. show. Yeah. On your Cave show. Book, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, I think that his point's well taken. Uh, but, um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, right after watching those Captain Marvel Juniors, I went and I FOMO'd. Uh, four of them, uh, or four or five, four of them, uh, from the the shop, which must not be named. But uh, but but back to this. Uh, from spring of forty eight, um, there is a uh, book called Captain Marvel Storybook, and this is Captain Marvel Storybook number three, from the spring of nineteen forty eight, and I just was struck by. It oh, wasn't cartoony. Cover. It was just really a cool. There's bullets bouncing off him. He's protecting a policeman from getting shot. That does and not look I just, like CC Beck either. Who's the artist? The artist is not mentioned. I'll have to look up. But yeah, yeah. this is a. It's a three, but it's it's uh, 
uh, I have no idea what the survival rate is. I didn't know that one of the Captain Marvel had a whole bunch of stuff. Um, That's a really and this nice is, one. This is the, the spring of 1948. And the nice thing about this, and, and clear up into 48, because usually the early books, you know, in the early the early 40s and what have you would have pinups on the back. Mm -hmm. This one actually has a pinup on the back. Oh, very nice. And that is CC Beck, actually, the, the pinup, I can tell. Uh, very cool. Um, so and a I, lot of those pinups I, get I, cut I, out too. So finding oh, one yeah. with you. Yeah. I I think that I, I think that the the uh, content for this for uh for any superhero taking having bullets bounce off him to protect a policeman, mm -hmm. you know, he's being hit four different ways. Yeah. Great. And down at the bottom, it has um, the 1948 uh, blood blood fund. You'll see the cross down yeah, there. It's a little cross, the, yeah. The blood fund. But uh, I just thought that this the, this concept, this cover, was just so cool uh, that I just I snapped. It wasn't terribly expensive, but I just I just really love the cover image in this. Yeah, no, it's really cool. Um, had you I, I seen this one? Had you seen it before? No, nope, never. That one's new for me. Very, very cool. Um, so then I have this. Another title that I collect, and Al and I collect, is Eerie. And this is Eerie number five from Avon Comics. February, March of 1952. This is a Wally Wood cover. It's like here. It's it's Erie what? Number two, right? No, this is Erie number five. Number five? <laughs> I guess mine's raw. Okay. The mummy is having a difficult day. Operation Horror, Master of the Cats. I painted only Terror, the knife of Jack the Ripper. And she's a big girl. As some, she's I don't know what she's doing in the tomb with the mummies, but there's a it's Egyptian uh, casket or, or uh, sarcophagus right there. Okay, so I'm going to let you keep on showing that, but I'm going to show a book with you. And this, th I think that this one's kind of interesting. Just to show together. You're going to show the green one? Yeah, I have that one too. Uh, I was going to pull it out. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, so this is like a little bit more focused on her. <laughs> Part of and her. they have one, they have some that they have some that are where the, the gal has a big word balloon in front of her so you can't see her. But these ones they didn't do that. But this these, is number thirteen. These they show are fully barbed and feathered. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it's really weird that they recycle the girl. It's. But yeah. it was a good okay. girl, and yours yeah. is Wally. No, she's awesome. And that's Wally Wood too, isn't it? Yeah, this one is. Um, yeah, I believe it's Wally Wood. But it says Harry Lazarus, but uh, it's. I think it's um, Wally Wood cover. And still one more, and this is the uh, this one uh, is one that Alan was stunned that I was able to get at the price I got it for. And one of the comics that I have been collecting is Black Cat. I have several Black Cats, um, and uh, this is Black Cat number one. Oh, yes, you had a really nice copy of it. Mine's like a one zero. Um... That's really nice. And that's what I was saying. She starts out with a motorbike. <laughs> so crazy. And you didn't pay much for it, did you? It was like 500 or? Up. Oh, it's more than that? Okay. It was six. Okay, well, no, that's not too bad. I think I paid I... like three, 400 for my <laughs> no. Uh, at popular demand after a five-year run in speed comics. And mm -hmm. I have a few speed comics where she's on the cover, and mm -hmm. they are Alex Schomburg covers. Oh, nice. Because Harvey, Harvey had him doing work for them. As, uh, Schomburg was at Harvey as well. 
Schomburg sure got around. I don't know. He obviously was not on any kind of an exclusive contract with any company. Well, Standard, yeah. Edor, Timely, Whitman, Harvey, um, Sci-Fi, um, Gaiety, uh, all this. I mean, uh, astrology. Um, yeah. I mean, he was everywhere. And I'm sure there's even more. Then they had those pocketbooks that he did. Yeah. That have the you know the the sex machine or whatever this uh, popular library whatever it is mm -hmm. this is a but this is a really fun it's it's a really nice completely intact yeah so very nice and the last one I have this the best the biggest one um, is from Ryan at Automatic Comics I got this from him and he cut me a very nice deal. Um, and uh, <clears throat> Pep Comics uh, during the war are some of the wildest covers you'll ever see. Um, and this particular book is um, has an, an absolutely spectacular color strike on it. This is Pep Comics number 37, uh, MLJ Magazines from March of 1943. There's a bondage, torture, murder cover. And, and it was crazy. done, and the cover was done, the cover and inter, some and interior art was done by Bob Montana with other with other guys that were in there. It was Paul Reinman, Irv Novick, Carl Hubble, Bob Fujitani, and Red Holmdale. So, but this is a beaut. Yeah, I know. It's really great. Um, if you and kind if of you zoom look, in on the guy if that you look, If over. you look closely... Here against the wall, the Japanese are are executing. There's two people already dead, and the bullets are moving over to take out the next guy, and then the gal, then the nurse. Presumably, these are service people, and that and she's a nurse. Mm -hmm. And yeah, in think... come and in come the shield. Dusty is his sidekick, and the hangman. Hmm. Isn't and, that a beaut? Uh... That is great. You know what's going to happen. The guy's going to get killed, but the girl will get saved. <laughs> well, you're probably right. It was uh, the Canadians. They they were they were easy to capture. They don't run very fast, <laughs> and the it, but it's an American nurse, and so they're they'll be just in time to save the American nurse. Mm. But a beautiful mm. comic. So yeah, so that's interesting. You know, it's um thirty seven. That's there's not that many more issues before it becomes just like Archie dominated. Um, Archie, the mirth of the nation is inside. It says, it says uh, Archie, the mirth of the nation in this issue. Um, and uh, the back is really interesting. You can get a live parakeet sent to you. <laughs> uh, pick your prize. And what are we selling here? It doesn't look to be Cloverine Sav. Oh, that's not good then. Uh, you gotta sell Cloverine Sav. Car garden spot seeds to sell. So this is for your victory garden. So you buy those, you can you you can get you can get a guitar, a mandolin, a banjo. Um, you can get a Priscilla, a ten-piece Priscilla curtain set. Um, you can get uh, homing pigeons. Pepcom, well, the Archie, was, super Archie, popular. Archie <laughs> was so popular Archie. that that the the fans were calling for Archie, not the superheroes. I have the very last, I have the very last appearance of the Shield. He was the last hero to 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 gasp out in in Pep Comics, mm -hmm. and it's a it has a Betty uh, cover with her wearing a, a a black or blue dress with red flowers on it. And uh, Archie is complaining to Betty's father that Betty won't leave him leave him alone. What an mm -hmm. idiot! And Betty's looking, <laughs> Betty's looking super hot, and and Archie's complaining to uh, to uh, old man Cooper about what a horse is. Okay, anyway, but this yeah. is, but this was the the this was the showstopper, That's among nice. others. And uh, I just think that, and of course, the Japanese down below and the caricatures, propaganda cover all the way. World War Two, and in '43, if this is February, this is February, uh, or excuse me, March of '43, probably January of '43, and uh, the war was not, it was certainly not in, uh, going our way in '43 so much. 
Um, we were still building up to try to get, you know, get to where we had to go. We were still island hopping and doing a whole bunch of other stuff. So this is pretty deep in the pit of the war, but this particular issue has the Japanese. Um, my mother was born in New Jersey and to her, the Nazis were very a drag. My dad okay. was born here in Portland and for him, it was the Japs, excuse me, the Japanese that were the ones that, that really scared us on the West Coast for obvious mm -hmm. reasons, yeah, invasion yeah. and what have you. And the fact that Pearl Harbor got zapped uh, and they also went up when they were going to go up to when they were going to uh, go take Midway. One of the distractions and one of the, the feints that they used, uh, which was ill conceived and didn't really work that well, was they basically sent a task force up to invade Alaska. And they went and they took Kiska and Attu and some of these islands that are right there. And they were going to implying that they were going to start to go up those that chain of islands right into into Alaska. And they figured that that would then divert some of the fleet from the United States to go up and deal with that because they say, well, my God, they're, they're going to attack Alaska. We have to go protect Alaska. Well, the answer is those poor bastards got on the island. They had no idea what Alaska was like. <laughs> they yeah, just, really cold. And they were cold. They were starving. They, I mean, they couldn't get any food to them. They, could, they couldn't do anything. It's all rock and cold and everything else. So they really they screwed the pooch big time, and it didn't. Yeah. And the and the U.S. Nimitz and and uh, Fletcher and all these guys, they didn't Halsey. They didn't fall for that crap at all. They knew because we cracked the code, at, that it was going to be Midway. And the the key to it was, they sent. Uh, they were the they they had basically, they said that the water uh, purifier on Midway was a problem. And we needed another water purifier. And the Japanese were so uh, 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 careful about what they said and included everything. Then they said, uh, Project X needs a water purification, has water problems. So they verified by an innocuous statement like that and their efficiency at giving all the information that they figured out what the code for Midway was. And so we, we knew exactly what they were doing. We didn't know exactly where they were. Kiska. Kiska. Where's Kiska? Kiska is in Alaska. Kisha, I'm not familiar with. But Kisha, Kiska, is, Kiska is up in, off of Canada, of uh, Canada, off, off Alaska, uh, up mm -hmm. in the uh, Aleutians, Aleutians. Uh, but they're all the way up there, the, the land bridge that went over to Russia. Okay. Um, wow, people really make fun of north. people make fun of Seward, uh, because uh, because they called it Seward's icebox and all that stuff. And all he did was make the deal of the century with like two cents an acre. It I know it's like sixty six million dollars or something like that after the war. And we got all of the Russians wanted the money; they needed the money for whatever they wanted. Can you feature if Russia still had Alaska all these years? My God, it right. would. We, there was no way we could. All of the natural resources that are up there that we eventually Huge. will start to use, they would have already been using them. But we will, too, once we have more enlightened management from this. <laughs> more management. So um, but this whole thing here, this this uh, the 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 uh, the the when the, when Midway did happen, though, uh, that really was the uh, you know, as far as how those things, those those things go on the war. And Midway really was the one that basically flattened the, all of the, the four flat tops got sunk and a bunch of their ships. And then they went after, you know. Oh, well, thank you. oh he's trying to put it right, but it keeps on spell checking it. That's <laughs> but anyway, uh, but uh, being a, uh, I've, this is my mantra, being a student of history. Uh, and Jerry the Jitterbug said this too, which I thought was, I didn't realize this about him. But with me, it's always like, you know, you go to a movie and you suspend your disbelief. With me, if you're reading a comic and you can put yourself, if you look in the, if you look in the, in the, in a, a Google 1943 and see what was going on, you could see, you could tell exactly what the kids that were reading these books, what was happening, what, what was they were mindset? seeing, what they were seeing in newsreels, what they were listening to over the radio. Uh, uh, you know, and, and uh, like I say, newsreels at the theaters, because everybody went to the theater, there was no television. And so you would have, and the radio broadcasts that we're talking about and stuff like that, 
how surreal. And then if you have family members or if your brother or whatever it was, and they're over there, one's in the Pacific, one's in the European theater or whatever's going on. I mean, it's just, it's, I won't say it's sobering, although it is sobering, but what it is, is it gives you a feeling. It gives you an action, you know, it, it's, it's, it's something very, very unique and rare that you, we have with comic books, these are touchstones to our culture and our history. Yeah, they're time And happens. so, and very, very much. And mm -hmm. so when you're with, with the Japanese focus here from in 43, but of course the Nazis were still having, we're, of course the Battle of the Bulge was in 44. But, uh, but all of this stuff that goes on, 43, we weren't done with any, either of them until 45. But uh, in any event, I just, this one is... Uh, uh, particularly pep comics almost without exception are always trashed because they were read and 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 they're that's it's a fact and mm -hmm. finding them in nice shape like this is a very difficult task to do especially with the the really good world war ii covers so this is a real uh, fun one to have i've got about i think i've got about a half a dozen i think about a half a dozen i have a i think i have one from the frank bruner collection uh, <laughs> very the comics scene. got history too. Okay, cool. Well, I think that comics are, to a certain degree, comics are, are history. history. Especially if you're collecting Golden Age, it's going to be that. Um, yeah, but one other thing, Alan, before you wrap, yep. Yep. Um, you know, if you read Tales of Suspense, and I, mm -hmm. I, you know, I had the whole run of Tales of Suspense, and I have a good run of Tales of Suspense now with Iron Man. I don't have the 39, but I have 40 on up until it, the, the title changes. I mean, then mm -hmm. we have the class of 68 stuff. But it started out with Tony Stark in Vietnam was where he got yes, blown up. Yes, I know, yes. And so they're talking about the Reds and they're talking about all this other mm -hmm. stuff and Khrushchev and Russia and the communists and all that other stuff. And that the 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 uh, the, the Crimson Dynamo and all this stuff and, and the Titanium Man, these were all Russian you know, these were all commie plots to get them. Yeah. Uh, and he had the, they had the Berlin Wall with that one giant man where he crashes the Berlin Wall to get the, the aviator, the, 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 uh, the, the black aviator that got captured mm -hmm. by them. And they got these giant gorillas with the skull, of the, with the uh, hammer and the sickle, and they're walking around beating people up, these giant gorillas. I mean, it really mm -hmm. is, it is history. And they've, they've gone away from, and actually the first Iron Man movie is that they 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 retroed or they 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 well, changed they had the to history. make it more modern more arab yeah not arab but they made it more like you know like against well, middle the eastern, middle eastern middle east villains right so in any event but during the war during the during vietnam you know tony stark injury uh, injuries uh, industries had to do with uh weapons and systems and all that other stuff and one of the things he was talking about it made a big deal about roller skates that popped out the bottom of his boots so he could go 35 miles an hour on these <laughs> these transistorized boots you know everything was transistors you know back in 63 yeah, yeah. 62 are, Every, everybody had a transistor radio you know mm -hmm. you know blame it on the bossa nova baby you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so um okay so i'm gonna actually wrap it up and okay I I appreciate you coming on and showing those great books. Actually, I Thank thought you. you had one more that you were going to show, but uh, I guess it didn't arrive yet. The romantic uh, one. The... No, the romantic one has not yet arrived. Yeah, and it was supposed cool to, I think, but it's, you know, I, I don't think the mail has even come yet. So, oh, that's weird. It seems like Mondays um, is some sort of a problem. Yeah. So, um, okay. But um, we'll maybe show that on Friday. Thanks, Alan. Thanks for having me on. It was a lot of fun showing books. I liked what you showed. Okay. Uh, I really like that 9-2 that you showed. That is, that Popeye book is a screamer. That's a great yeah. book. Uh, I, was I mean, in, in, in almost in virtually any grade, but a 9-2 white pager for that book is a killer book. Yeah, I was I was amazed that nobody bit it up. I, I it just... That, that's just stunning. Well Sometimes done. Sometimes you get really good deals on uh, heritage auctions. That was a heritage auction win. Um, I'm I, I'm a scared I'm a scared of heritage auctions to go bidding. I just don't. I like to. I I tend to be where where we are, as you know, and and uh, that jet that's where I get most of mine because. I keep hearing this, you and you've mentioned it too, that with heritage, sometimes their grading 
as far as what they say it's really not exactly what they thought it was and supposedly yeah. these are the big experts at all this stuff and you said they well, said it was I this and this is what i got i could see you were just you were bummed and i didn't like i didn't like that well that's why i buy the slabs most of the times i did buy a few raws uh but um for the most part i buy slabs off heritage well, thank you. Thanks for having me on, Ellen. It's a fun. I, I like our Mondays. I hope that the chat, I hope people enjoyed what we were showing. It's pretty darn good stuff tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thanks for coming. Adios. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye, guys.